Hello, today I'm going to be talking about The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, this won the Booker Prize, it came out in 1989. And um, yeah, he's just a, a fabulous writer. This follows a butler called Stevens. He was once the, the butler to Lord Darlington of Darlington Hall and um, sat in on many an important meeting and was just like absolutely at the top of his game, um, the game of butlering. This takes place in 1956. Um, so it's kind of historical fiction. Um, 1956, when he's kind of reached old age, it takes place over um, a week long period where he's taking a road trip down to Cornwall to try and woo um, his old housemaid, Miss Kenton, to coming back to work for the estate. Throughout the road trip, Stevens is documenting his life in the 20s and 30s at Darlington Hall um, and the kind of like decline of the house when, when Lord Darlington died um, and the, the house was sold to an American and now has just a complete skeleton staff, like there are only five of them. I forgot a prop! I need to get a prop, hold on. I decided to strong arm my book club into picking Remains of the Day for our book club this month um, because of this book, The Science of Storytelling, uh, which I reviewed last month. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description below to that video. Um, but this is all about kind of like how to tell the most compelling stories uh, based on psychology and like what the human brain wants out of storytelling. Uh, and it features several um, well, it features a, a lot of different examples, but there are some that it comes back to um, quite often. And one of those was Remains of the Day. Very early on in the mentions of Remains of the Day in this, I was like, I want to read, I want to read this book. So I had to just, just start passing over any mention of Remains of the Day. Specifically at the start, it was talking about uh, character development and how to, um, like a really strong way of crafting a character is finding their, their fatal flaw. The one axis that their character rotates around. What is the like one thing that they believe that may be a flawed belief, it may be completely untrue, that completely defines their identity. And I mentioned this as a perfect example of, um, of Stevens because he is so caught up in the idea of dignity. He models himself upon his father who he thought was just the epitome of, of, of dignity and a perfect butler. So I was reading this expecting Stevens Senior to be a very prominent character um, and it's actually really interesting because I noted the first time he was mentioned was on page uh, 35. We've already really laid the foundations of Stevens' character. He bases the entirety of his character on this one point, even when that makes him become quite a cruel or, or robotic man. And it's all kind of founded on his father being this robotic man to him and never really showing love, but him seeing that as a positive quality. And because his whole character revolves around this, this one um, trait, you can really acutely understand him very quickly and you can totally empathise with why he's like particularly cold and cruel at some moments. And his um, one element that I thought was really quite a very interesting thing that kind of crescendos towards the end is his um his master is that the right word uh the lord darlington the the lord of the manor that he was serving um was kind of on the wrong side of history so a lot of this book um it takes place in the run-up to world war ii and all of these private conferences that they would host where they would there would be a bit like one dignitary that they were trying to woo over to a particular opinion and um lord darlington really thought that he was doing uh like really great work for the country in, in hosting these things and um, and in kind of like navigating all of these these like political circles like from behind the scenes. But he ends up being on the sort of bad side of history. And it's kind of, you have to kind of tease that out from the novel because Stevens is so like reticent to um, actually admit that his master had any any failings. So I think you can't help but but love Stevens because everything that he does that's bad is just like so explainable. I really, really like this book. It was a fantastic book club book. So many different um, elements to unpick and I wanna go, go in a bit deeper there, but it was quite melancholic because it was really a man talking about his his glory days um, and it's it's very sad 
the contrast between all these these things he's talking about and then the complete demise of of the English butler since the 30s where that society um, and that kind of community just doesn't doesn't exist anymore. But he holds it with such grace, such dignity, um, that it's a really charming, a really charming read. There are also some bits that are just outright hilarious. <laughs> it's very, very funny um, the way the way he talks. So his new boss, this American guy, um, like has a has a bit of a joke with him, and um, Stevens is like, oh, bantering. It's, if that's going to be in the realm of the the things that I am supposed to provide, I must study bantering and get better at, at these witticisms. <laughs> um, like there's this one point where Lord Darlington asks him to explain the birds and the bees to his nephew, um, and he just completely fails because the nephew keeps misunderstanding what he's trying to hint at, and it is. It's laugh out loud funny at bits, which I, I didn't expect from this at all. For most of the book, it's just like a nice read, but I think towards the end, it starts to um, really start saying stuff about a lot of the themes that it only kind of like hinted at throughout the novel. One of them is democracy versus this, this aristocracy. There's a point at which one of Lord Darlington's visitors says like, democracy has had its time. Now let's go back to, you know, how we do it in the back room. We make the decisions on behalf of the country. One of them says, the man in the street can't be expected to know enough about politics, economics, world commerce, and what have you. And why should he? In fact, you made a very good reply last night, Stevens. How do you put it? Something to the effect that it was not in your realm. Um, and I think that's a very uh, salient point that is so easy to dismiss these days. I feel like we're in a phase of uh, society where any kind of criticism of democracy um, is is unacceptable. And I've always kind of leaned towards, I elect um, leaders so that they can make the decisions, so that they can, I, I trust these people the most, that they are going to learn what they need to learn to make the decisions they need to make. And uh, I think with, there's, there's like a, a particular um, a character towards the end here that is a massive lefty and you know hands out leaflets and that kind of thing that's a lot more common now for everyone to feel like they can significantly contribute in any argument and know enough to actually make decisions and there are many people that think that you should be such an informed voter that you could in their place make the same decisions but I don't think I need to be that informed a voter I think you need to be informed enough to trust the person that you you are promoting um, and making sure they're in line with your values, but you shouldn't have to care about their um, their position on every single thing, because the fact is that they should know more than you about all of those things. You're not going to be able to hold a candle to that. But then the criticism in Remains of the Day is that um, that, that system of aristocracy like completely fails. Lord Darlington is shamed because he, he swayed history the wrong way. And I think it's great that the book doesn't actually draw a conclusion on that because like most things in the world, there are good sides and bad sides of each. I love that it feels like a thesis towards thinking complexly and not a thesis towards any side of any argument. The decline of the, um, the, the aristocracy is obviously a, a major theme in, in here as well. Um, and it's just quite, quite sad. And one of the, the points I made in my book club is that in a, a very kind of class divided society, um, you sure you, you'll be stuck in the rung of whatever you, you are. Um, but Stevens is like the best of butlers. And although he's never going to get like a knighthood, um, he can, his ambition can be to the, the best of, of the, the world of butlering. And, um, that's like so respectable. But these days, because we've we've like removed these barriers, um, well, not entirely, but <laughs> more so than then, um, that you can kind of traverse these class, these class barriers, it means that we're sort of all competing against each other, which is really horrible because it can just be like, I'm not successful until I'm prime minister because there is no ceiling anymore. Um, it's very hard to be satisfied at any level apart from the very top. Also the communities around these great households just seem like absolutely delightful places to work because there is still some vertical movement. Like you can you can you can become the greatest butler of a great household. Um, but you also, yeah, you're just living in a slightly smaller world. And these this world, you know, you interact with the, the other butlers from the other houses and the housemaids go off and get married to the footman. Um, but it's just I think it's very charming for being a very kind of like 
beautifully self-contained um, little thing. And then, and then when you hear it from Stevens in his old age, where the house has been mostly dust sheeted, it's really sad that he's lost his personal community, but also he's lost his his like ancestral community, if I can say that. Like um, the world that he was taught was the world that you occupy just doesn't exist anymore. Um, and that's, yeah, that's really sad. The way it ends, which I think is quite, quite lovely, and where the title comes from is that he's sitting um, in Weymouth, looking out at the, the pier that's just been lit up um, with another gentleman beside him. Um, and the, the gentleman is just like a very, very peaceful. And they're talking about, um, you know, life and, 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 and life going by. And, and he, he, he ends by saying, ask anybody, they'll all tell you the evening's the best part of the day. And it's very serene, um, but it's also, to Stevens, it's like, I actually, I don't need to be caught up in these stresses of life anymore. I'm reaching old age and being peaceful is its own quality. And sitting on the pier and being reflective and being thankful of this interesting life he's had um, just rounds up this, this whole story just brilliantly. I hope you've enjoyed this video on the remains of the day. I feel like I talked for a very long time. I would super recommend it. It was fantastically written. It's quite short as well, it's only like 250 pages. Um, and it also made an incredible book club book. Um, I hope I've got across some of those themes in this video that are very, very complex and, and very interesting to talk about. Um, so yeah, I haven't read any other Kazuya Shigeru. I really want to read um, Never Let Me Go, obviously. Um, he, and, and very different books, so I'm just um, quite interested in the range that he is capable of. Uh, and yeah, I think I'm going to be reading a lot more Ishiguro in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in another one soon.